Hello there, welcome to another episode of the Player Notra Podcast. This is episode 179. Nine. Nine. Woo! Nine. That means okay. we're going to start off on an even number next year. I like it. Oh, that's true. Mm. 180. Nice number. So yeah, it's end of the year. Last episode of 2020. 2020 is coming to an end. Um, more of the... Uh, Richer countries are getting access to vaccines, so there's that, I guess. Yeah. And uh, Canada and... bought like ten times the vaccines they needed. Yay! Oh, did they really? I didn't hear yeah, that, really. that one. Um, they did. I believe they did say they're gonna distribute it, distribute the vaccines for free to poor countries. Don't quote me on that, but I believe I that is the case. Like but I'm not sure if that was the plan initially or that was after <laughs> getting criticized for buying 10 times the fucking vaccine they needed. So I'm yeah. not super sure of that. Which is so funny because not that I maybe this maybe there was a different. I know at one point we actually had got way fewer uh, vaccines than we needed. So I don't I don't know what that if that changed we, or um, not. <laughs> Malaysia is also going to get vaccines for 2021 and we're going to the target was 70 percent vaccination rate and yeah. I think we ordered enough for 84% so. okay nice but I believe herd immunity needs like 90 something percent right you know what I don't think it's that high I think like a, I think you I think 70 to 80 is actually okay don't quote mm. me on that I, I don't only mind say going that... to 95 or something though oh like, no just absolutely to be safe, not right? Yeah, for sure. But I actually think it's not as many as we think. The problem is just that so few people take advantage of the vaccination. I only say that based on an experience I had uh, in college. There was a huge push when I was in co- my college campus for everyone to get the flu vaccine. And one of my professors reported concern because they we were offering flu. Uh, free flu vaccines on campus and they were like yeah we only have reported maybe 30 percent of our student body taking care of it now hopefully some people um like myself we did it off campus when i was home one time but like they had no idea so they were like we're not reaching immunity this year so um i thought it was like around 70 to 80 percent but i could be wrong um so so over here it will be free for malaysian citizens basically nice how are you guys doing it I, so it's really, I don't know if you've heard differently. Is it depend though, on, depending on state? I think it might depend on state. I know what Michigan, but I think they, I think there's a, like a federal kind of overlay, but I think each state's kind of deciding it. In Michigan, at least, we have a phase process. So our frontline workers and I, and around, I think, so our frontline medical workers, so like emergency tech, people working mm. with those with COVID, they got theirs first, along with our politicians. Um, <laughs> of course, of course. But um, um, one of your politicians is saying like she's not taking it right now because she don't think she's. Um, because she says the frontliners should get it first, not the politicians. Is what she said. I'm sure. I'm sure there's some that are taking a good stand on it. Uh, a lot that are taking it are, of course, you know, pe- the those uh, Congress people who have spent yeah. their careers right now touting that it doesn't exist. So that's great. Mm. Um. No idea if the president's taken yet. Our VP did. Vice President of the United States did. I don't know if our president actually has, to be honest with you. I haven't heard the news. <laughs> no he might. I don't know. Um, the problem, though, I just found out recently is uh, what's happening is so we're supposed to have these phases, basically. So it's frontline workers. Then it's like people who live in um, nursing homes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's, there's like an people over six and other kinds of medical staff, basically. So I can't, I don't know yet. I may be in line to be able to take it soon. I don't know yet. We're kind of waiting to hear. I don't think I will, but I might be. Is it free? Um, so far as I've heard, yes, but I don't actually know, to be honest with you. Cause a lot of vaccines are covered by insurance, which means uh, free so for it's those who really can get free, it. really free, free. More of a. I don't think so, but I I also haven't heard to be honest with you, mm. um, and then um then it's like people over sixty five I think, and then I think it's supposed to go in general. But one of the problems that's happening and the 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 news where I heard this, the person they were talking to, who was a medical staff person, confirmed that this is happening, but they haven't confirmed if like they take deal was taken. A lot of rich people have been going to hospitals and offering huge donations if they can get in line to get the vaccine 
like tens of thousands of dollars of donations. Um, and we did, there was a, someone they were interviewing that's a medical worker who confirmed that this is happening. Uh, no word if hospitals have actually taken the money, just that it's happened. <laughs> so that's fun. Because, <laughs> you know, our whole medical system's super screwed up where they are simultaneously over like overfunded in certain areas and completely underfunded in other areas. So that's great. <laughs> But yeah, that's all I know, to be honest with you. I don't know if you've heard anything else. I haven't really been following the vaccine thing. I have friends who've gotten it because they're doctors, but I don't really know even like, I don't like, I think even if you have the vaccine right now, it doesn't change anything for you. Like you, you are safer, but like you can't live a different lifestyle. It's not like you're out of like, I've got a free pass to go to Disneyland now. It's like, you know, it doesn't really change anything from a lifestyle perspective. So I, I don't, yeah, I haven't been following it. Yeah, kind of what I've heard is that you basically the vaccine makes it so that you won't basically get as sick with COVID, but you can still carry COVID. That's yes, the my, was, okay. I hadn't heard for sure one way or the other, but I know for a fact people are going to pretend like that part doesn't exist. Yeah, and it also <laughs> doesn't help that it's two doses that are two weeks apart. So like, right. I got one dose. So I'm okay enough, right? Yeah, I'm like no. <laughs> We're still not out of the woods from any of this. But, yeah, that's that's the concern. That's why we want to reach the herd immunity. Um, but that is the, the issue is you still need to start wearing masks and stuff like that and keep washing mm. your hands. Honestly, um, I because... might just continue wearing masks if I feel unwell and stuff. You know how the Japanese Absolutely. do it. That's I mean, that's what we would like to. Well, I say we. I'm just uh, wondering that's... like how much of like maybe not U.S. per se with the, all the anti-mask stuff, but this. In general, in the world, I wonder like how much of this like wearing masks thing is gonna like continue there was after. A the... I read about this last mm-hmm. week. I don't remember what people were saying. Yeah, I would definitely not be surprised if, especially just major cities, even maybe in some parts of the U.S., because most major cities in the U.S. Well, tend to be liberal. If you're um, on a train, I can for sure see you wanting to wear a mask. Yeah, for airplane. sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, no, definitely. I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, if like in mo- like in major cities, um, including in the U.S., because major cities tend to be more liberal, that we start seeing it more kind of like like you were talking about, like in Japan, um, just more commonly wearing masks in general by the populace. Just you know, especially during like flu and cold season, I would not be surprised if we start seeing that commonplace. I'm all for it. I I think it makes sense. Uh, excuse me, but you know, of course, we have a lot of crazy people, so. <laughs> Do you guys know Tencent, the giant gaming Chinese? Yes. The Chinese. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. They are they are hiring for, um, so I believe they are like the official partner slash distributor for Nintendo in China or something like that. <clears throat> and of Nintendo. They, okay. Yeah. And in June they announced Pokemon Unite. A Tencent mm-hmm. studio is making this game. It's basically a five v five Pokemon team battle strategic type game. And I'm not sure if this is related to that, but they are hiring Pokemon experts. Let me read the um, um, the uh, requirements. Oh my you need gosh, to have what? to clear all Pokemon games with at least 900 hours of playtime. You need to have Master Ball ranking in the latest Pokemon game. Which is like a competitive ranking. Yeah, should be the highest. Should be the highest okay. competitive ranking yeah, in the latest yeah. game, Sword and Shield. And you must have watched five hundred plus episodes of the anime. <laughs> Wait, how do they? How are they going to vet all this? Yeah. yeah. What? Oh my god! If you've done it, if they want you to do it in a way that's vettable, you'll have to redo it. <laughs> and for some of those things, like watching anime. Uh, the old. I guess you can show the old console save file. Does it have time played on it? That's fair. Yeah, you could do that. But how do you gonna... have you do a test? Did Maybe they a test? I'm not really sure, but it's just somebody on Twitter talking about because the the requirements are in Chinese and I don't read Chinese, so it's just somebody on Twitter um, translating it. And somebody on Reddit um, shared a picture of this guy. I think he's doing a talk. Uh, mm-hmm. He has his LinkedIn profile list a bunch of programming uh, languages with some Pokemon names in between. And he asked recruiters to point out which of these are Pokemon. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so there's Metapod, there's Ekans. Okay. Well, that's kind of weird. I'm not really sure how they're going to vet this. 
Yeah, I know. I do. I mean, you know, there's those those people out there that are like, my time has finally come. Mm. <laughs> I told my mom and dad I could make a job out of this. <laughs> I'm not saying it's kind of like, and usually gamers making games. That's not really a. Yeah, I mean, I know. With, I'm not with saying no all... like game creating experience for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you get stuff like this. I was like, if if there's the requirements, like you know, the game's only going to reward you if you put in a similar insane amount of of crap. <laughs> exactly this is interesting that is pretty funny though and the reason i find that interesting is only because i thought nintendo like had pokemon experts on their staff i only say that because i only say that because wasn't that like a thing with detective pikachu where they had pokemon experts like while the movie was being made that would correct certain things that were being done in the movie to make sure it fit the canon or whatever wasn't that a like wasn't there a story really? about that i'm not really sure but why don't okay. they just hire people from the pokemon company right exactly Aren't they, i mean you, you it's a partnership i'm assuming because you yeah. gotta license the thing anyways right unless the pokemon company do not care enough to send a consultant over i guess yeah maybe, maybe they refuse to i don't know that it, it is weird <laughs> That's the only thing that kind of surprises me. Is like I feel like they already have people whose job was like to do this because they were the ones who created it. You know, I don't know. <laughs> it is very strange, but um, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, so I played Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Yep, you played more than I did. <laughs> I played about twenty three, twenty four hours of it. And okay. I didn't finish it, and I deleted it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry you couldn't oh. refund it. <laughs> this, yeah. And to be clear, your problem wasn't not okay. Playability. Yeah. So game I'll I'll get into it. You found the game boring. Okay, I'll get yeah. to it. The bugs were annoying. Yes, but my problems with the game are not the bugs at all. So it's. Number one, I literally bought this off the reputation they built from The Witcher Tree. Right. And I believe their marketing was also like, so many decisions you can make, all these paths and shit. Yeah, none of that shit was in the game. The only thing that I've read that your decisions actually matters are like some decisions you can make that changes the ending and they have a few endings. Mm-hmm. That is so 2010. Bioware, like Bioware did it yeah. much better in Dragon Age Origins that came out in 2010. Right. So, like, the life path that you choose in the beginning, you got three life paths. One is Nomad, one is Corpo, one is uh, Street Kid. Uh, street Runner yeah. or something, yeah. yeah. Street Rat, whatever. Street Kid. So, mm. it's like, you know, different, different upbringing, different paths of life. You're supposed to get... Um, in the game, it says people will react to you differently depending on your choices and the life path and you also have different choices yeah uh-huh. that's bullshit you get sometimes sometimes extra dialogue options depending on your life path and it's not mm-hmm. important at all it's not a most of the time it's not important it's just there yeah. as extra dialogue <sighs> I, I'm kind of upset, right. but also a little relieved almost to hear that because I... So I've played very little of this game. My plan right now is to basically just get through the tutorial and then pretty much return this game and then wait until it's probably fixed with at least some of the bugs or something and then mm. maybe buy it cheaper just to experience it. Um, so I... So Clay's my issue is that I think about when they did the paths... Versus how they address those in the first Mass Effect, right? So when they address the past in the beginning, I thought it was kind of like, okay, yeah, I know they got to congeal the story somehow, but like, you know, maybe it's like Dragon Age Origins, where your Dragon intro Age is completely. They did it way better. Where you it's have a, a game whole that came complete, out 10 years ago. Right. Exactly. A completely <laughs> unique intro, and yeah. then, you know, little bits here and there it applies. Or maybe Mass and Effect, the where way like. People rep- uh... 
um, react to you in the world. React to you. It's a little. It's a little unique. And then you know, or they could maybe do it Mass Effect way, where it's not really that important, but at the same time, the importance wasn't really placed on its in the beginning, right? It's just more of an extra flavor, and you get an extra mission as a result of it. But the problem is, they make it seem like it's a huge deal. Yep. Of which one you pick, like it's gonna they affect your class choices. Yes, like it's gonna affect your classes, is how I understood it to be. Mm-hmm. So it I picked cor- everything. You can play three yes. times and three completely different. Ki- no, kind of. No. Yeah, that's kind of how I understood it to be. Or at the very least, like I said, like a complete intro, like a real mm. meaty, like so, you know. There is the intro, <sighs> but instead of like Dragon Age Origins, which what lasted a couple hours, three hours maybe. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole like mission. Twenty-five minutes. At yeah, at this minimum. One is 25 so minutes. I, I was so disappointed because I played I picked Corpo and I can't even say this is a spoiler because it happens within the first ten minutes. The beginning of Corpo was fascinating to me. I was like, whoa, there's so much going on. Oh, did I just miss an optional mission because I went too far? That's weird. Ooh, this computer, I have all this information at my fingertips. Ooh, I get asked to do this crazy mission that could get me in huge trouble. I'm asking my friend for help. I thought maybe this friend is the same in all three paths or something something and then all of a sudden i get everything taken away from me and i'm given a you know two minute sequence that just shows Mm. how i basically am like at the same point as everybody else in the game so that two minute sequence is in all three life paths and that yeah i figured supposedly six months or a year of like the game thing and i what some people some people's theory is that content was actually there but it was cut it feels like it. Like, it feels like there was more they were going to do and then couldn't. And it's mm. like, whoa, okay. And, you know, and, and to be fair, like, I probably could have given it more of a ch- I probably may, uh, could have decided to give more of a chance. Like I said, I'm going to do the intro just so I can at least see who the hell uh, Keanu Reeves' character is. That's all. Mm. But, like, <laughs> I'm just, but, like, at this at this point, I that I will say, like, that made me go, whoa. Okay, what was the point of all that then, you know? Like, I, I really designed my character with the idea of, I'm a corpo. You know, I got to look a little more professional looking. Um, I was really, I loved the, I, I enjoyed the character creation sequence. I actually made my character look like my face because I could. Their character creation, as far as, like, what you can do, it's pretty intense mm. in some ways. Um, but then, yeah, you get to that point, you're like, oh, okay, what? You know, and so... I don't know. It, it that that really struck me. Um, I don't know. Like I said, it's one of those things that like I might be willing to give it more of a chance later. Um, but with what I've been hearing with some of the like game crashing bugs or like there's a certain point there's like there's like now news out there where if you get past a certain point on PC, you could actually like lose your entire game file or something uh, like that. Your I'm save just, like, file can get corrupted if it gets past eight megabytes or something. Yeah, something like that. So which I late, guess they actually yeah. just released a hotfix like today to okay. remove that save file limit. But whoever got corrupted, they they can't Screwed. get it back. Yeah. So yeah. So you know, it just all that stuff. I'm just like, I don't really want to support this. You know, like I feel bad for the developers. I really do. Don't worry, um, they're gonna get their bonuses because they sold 30 yeah. million copies. Yeah, well, at least they did. That's happening. <laughs> roughly at about fifty, sixty dollars each copy. Just, just do the math. The, yeah. the, so, yeah. I'm not hating on Cyberpunk 2077 just because it's like, oh, the new popular game. There needs to be haters. Right. I was waiting for this fucking game. Okay. So was I. Like I was most people. Geeked about this game. Yeah, because I was like, these guys made The Witcher Three, one of my favorite RPGs of all time, and I really like Cyberpunk themes and setting. This is going to be so cool. Yeah. So another problem I have with this game is the skills. Mm -hmm. So this is like, this is another like branch of the my choices don't fucking matter. One side Uh of the branch is my choices don't matter for the narrative. Except for the few endings. But honestly, that's that's like a really easy way to do it. Um, but um, my other problem is my choices don't really matter when it comes to character building, uh, character oh, progression. Really? Like the skill, tr- like, yeah, sure. I have like, I can choose to be more like a hacky hacky kind of guy, but it's not fun. Like, it's just not fun. And I can just go through any level shooting and like, I, I guess I can choose that, yeah. not to kill ish, but the skills 
it's the skill tree is just not very fun and just feels like and it just feels like there's no trade-off so if i want to be like a super hacker i can still shoot and kill things instead of yeah. being bad at it like, I, I, yeah, I heard um, from some people, like, some of their complaints reminded me of the first Watch Dogs game, where it was like, yeah, you can specialize more on hacking and choose to go that way. At the end of the day, though, you mess up a little bit, and you're just going to start shooting, and that's and how you're going to solve the problem. There's also that, stealth in it. this game, because, of course. Yeah. There's also a stealth skill tree, because, yeah. of course. Um, yeah. Stealth is not fun. Like, it's just... You go behind the guy and you crack the neck. And the animation looks funny, by the way. <laughs> the neck cracking, uh, there's like two. One is like they do the usual movie. Yeah. I'm going to spin your head real fast to the yeah. right. And then you die yeah. for some reason. Yep. <laughs> and then another yep. one is yep. like my character grabs the person in like a chokehold kind of thing. And it's like crack. But the animation is so weird. There's no impact. It feels like <laughs> the animation and the, the sound effect literally sounds like somebody cracking their knuckles. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it's so bad. I don't know why. And I've seen oh. people see say like, oh, stuff is so satisfying. Like, you must really like cracking your knuckles or something, man. Like, <laughs> I guess so. So the stealth is just eh. The hacking is like, whatever. And another thing. So there's one positive in this game. Mm-hmm. Night City is one of the most beautiful, like amazing looking environments I've ever been in in game yeah, environment it looks, looks, it looks amazing the first time when i saw like when i was able to control my character and go into the world i'm like holy shit these like tall buildings and these highways and like train i'm like this actually looks like a next gen city like i feel like i can i can go into like all these buildings you you can't by the way <laughs> um you will go to a door and it says uh, the door is locked but that is like basically a lie because the door is just never going to open for you so you, you you can't go into every building which is fine because that's kind of insane if you can do go right. into every building but that'd be too much it does feel amazing but the more you play you do realize how empty the world is gotcha you go around there are these side missions um one is like you help the cops one is like you um, help people being tortured interrogated and there's no emergent gameplay. Like with Red Dead Redemption 2, I will walk around the world and then suddenly I hear somebody like screaming or something or like I see something interesting happening. I will go there and then a small little dialogue will happen. It feels like the world is alive. Cyberpunk yeah. is not that at all. Like zero of that. No. It feels immersive because the world is so beautiful to look at, but it breaks the immersion completely up once you play it a little bit because of all the just non-emergent gameplay that's in it. And The Witcher 3 didn't really have emergent gameplay as well, but what they did do was they have all these, like, you know, they have a lot of icons on the map, right? Mm-hmm. And even the smallest little side quest where you got to get a pen for an old lady or something has like well written dialogue which makes the characters feel alive it's not just like go here kill this go here kill that go here help this person do this by killing another thing it's just like it feels like every little side quest had dialogue well written dialogue and it made the world feel alive and it almost had that emergent gameplay feeling to it even though it's like everything is scripted and there's even icons on the map. So you can actually go to it or whatever. But like, it makes it feel Does like... Does not have icons at all? They have a lot of icons. It's just that all the icons is kill this or kill that. Basically. Or or That's sneak like into this thing to steal that. University. Yeah, so it's just like... um. Basically, they have like all these small little things that you can do. Side activities, which a lot of it is like killing or stealing stuff. And I actually installed The Witcher 3 right after I played like 20 hours of Cyberpunk just to make sure I'm not crazy and I kind of want to play it again. Yeah, even the smaller side quests had like this really well-written characters and like dialogue and like it f- because of that, it felt so alive. It felt so... It felt like so handcrafted, which it was. Mm-hmm. You got to write the dialogue for it because that's why it feel, And it's kind of insane the amount of detail that went into The Witcher 3 versus Cyberpunk 2077. 
can't. I just found a news article headline. I'm not going to click it, but the headline is Cyberpunk 2077 player disappointed they don't get to keep the game after getting refunds. Yes, that's a thing, and I'm very, fair, very confused. To be fair, uh, yeah, I actually saw, I actually clicked on the article. Um, they say players, but the, there's only like one example. I'm not really sure if there's more than that. Oh, okay. But there was somebody on Twitter tweeting, I believe somebody from Microsoft, and the Microsoft guy... And the Microsoft guy took a screenshot of that 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 message and like I'm not really sure if it's more than just that one person. Got it. Okay. Got yeah, it. yeah. But that is yeah, kind of stupid. I, yeah. Enough to make the news cycle nowadays. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't take much. But yeah, I because yeah, that, I remember seeing that and being like, wait, how many people actually felt this way? <laughs> it seems ridiculous. So, don't expect the Witcher Tree level of detail and world building. Go into Cyberpunk 2077 thinking it's an action first-person shooter with RPG skill trees. That's it. Yeah. And a big open world with a lot of icons. I should just play Witcher 3 because I haven't played it and I actually own it already. Honestly, if you haven't played <laughs> Witcher 3, just play it. Just play that. I played the tutorial. So, um, but at this point, I need to replay the tutorial. And if I pick it up again, I'm gonna start from scratch again. <laughs> and if anybody says that I have to give Cyberpunk more time, I've put in like 23 hours. How many? How much more time do I need to put in? <laughs> like, I think yeah, by I that point, yeah. You should. I mean, like, it's like okay. the Witcher <laughs> also took a while, but that like was like five hours, six hours, which is fine for a big RPG. I'm cool with putting in that much hours to see if I really like it or not. But 23 hours should be able to tell me if I like the game or not. The shooting so. mechanics feels whatever. So it feels like that they just wanted to put in so much stuff that's like a looter shooter thing. Because you get guns all the fucking time. Every second encounter, <laughs> you'll probably be replacing your gun. And that's not fun because there's not much variety in the guns. So the looter shooter part makes you sucks. One? Like they have stats, like damage yeah, the stats, a higher, yeah, accuracy yeah. a little higher, but yeah. it's the same. Okay, I don't even uh, like item management. <laughs> and the, yeah, That's inventory insane. management is horrible. Ugh. You can't mark <laughs> stuff as junk. You got to sell shit one by one. <laughs> Do you know oh, how much man. shit you get? <laughs> like it's a lot. <laughs> um, and yeah, like management. I saw some reviews saying like, oh, they love the looter shooter aspects because. You get to change the guns every time, but that's that's not what makes a looter shooter good, though. That's like Borderlands is fun because the guns are all so different and it has all these elementals and shit. And just goes crazy. Mm-hmm. They're very different. Yeah, I mean, when, I mean, there are legendary stuff in the Cyberpunk as well, but it's like so much item management and like. It feels like they try to cram so many different types of games into one that they did nothing good. None of it. Yeah. It's not even a good at everything, master of none. They're not good at anything, I believe. Yeah, that it's is just it mediocre is too bad. in most things. And it was such a huge disappointment. I've the thing is I, I've played bad games before, but bad games always have that one or two things that feel, you know maybe yeah, it has a really sure. good story or maybe the combat's really good or like maybe it just has an interesting plot, interesting setting, something. It has a s mm-hmm. something to hook you. This one yeah. had nothing to hook me. I can't believe I deleted the game. From like, yeah, I'm pretty big. Yeah. And it's like it's a, in, that, in this game specifically, it's non-trivial to reinstall. Yeah, it's so big. It's like eighty gigabytes or something. I can't remember. Yeah, I, for me, like I feel like, I think for me, it's just everything going on. Um, and I don't really play nearly as many games. I don't, like, consume as many games as I used to. I barely buy AAA games as it is. I really, mm. I rarely do. And so, you know, I did this kind of because I was like, well, this was, like, one I was looking forward to. I, I got to at least give it a, a good try. And the thing is, is I feel like if I could consume games more quickly, I feel like I may be able to push past some of this stuff and just at least be like, I'm just going to give this a good old college try and, and go from there. But I got so little time and so many other better games to play. And yeah, you said you wanna, you're want to you thinking of returning a game, right? Refunding it. I am, yes. My plan is basically to make sure I'm under two hours because that's mm. the limit on Steam. Um, I want to see if I can at least just try the tutorial just to mm. say that, like, I did. Yeah, do, um, like, just, a few of, like, 
yeah. once the open world actually opens up do a couple of things yeah there, I, guess. I think i have to be careful of timing because i don't know how much i haven't checked my timer on it because i spent some time in the character creation so mm. i don't know if that's like counting with my time so i gotta be careful if but, you yeah, are my able plan- to refund I recommend using that money and getting Disco Elysium and Hades, <laughs> the two like really yeah. good indie games this year. I am gonna, I, mean, I am lot, gonna probably, like, Hades yeah, is... I am gonna, mm-hmm. I I am gonna look into Disco Elysium. Hades, the only re- like I know Hades is really good. I am just a little um, cautious only because it is definitely a game style that I don't usually play. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm not usually like, yeah, I'm not usually a roguelike uh, person. The only um, reason why I uh, mention Hades is because I do see a lot of people saying. I do not like roguelike. I do like Hades. That's just that. Yeah, that yeah. that is what I've heard, you know, and I heard that, you know, I know the characters are all interesting and very sexy, so that that helps too, of course. And also like the I whole, guess like like roguelikes when you die, you use like whatever resources to get better and blah blah blah, right? But there's also the part mm-hmm. where they designed it so that when you die, the plot moves. Mhm. Mm-hmm. You get a lot of dialogues so, from like so it's just really This like, is a good segue. Because since our last episode, I have played Hades now. I've played okay. it for at least 10 hours, probably. I've played it twice, but okay. two very long sittings, basically. Nice, nice. Um, so it's very addictive. I don't know that I'd say you'd like it if you don't like roguelikes, though. Mm. I, I'm going to kind of disagree. I, 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 it definitely does unique things about advancing the story or whatever. But sometimes I find that frustrating. It's like, I just, I kind of want to do story stuff now. I don't want to go and play the roguelike bit. <laughs> like, That's what I'm, I'm afraid. Like, I, I know. Like, That's what I'm afraid person. is going to happen. <laughs> so I'm going to just be like, I just want to know what's happening. I, oh, damn. <laughs> How hard is this? Is there an easy mode? <laughs> is I there a story mode? I am basically 50 something, 60 hours in, and I still get new dialogue. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Wow. Which is insane. Okay. Yeah. But I yeah. I the game yet. I think I've gotten to the final boss. I don't know if it is the final final boss or not, but I haven't actually beaten it yet. Mm. Yeah, I I'll consider it. I know it I know it's very popular right now and, and stuff like that and definitely I think it's going to be <laughs> less of a time sink. But I by that I mean just that like, you know, Cyberpunk, I think there's so much time you have to dedicate to it because yeah. of how, you know, they how did a the game imma- even if yeah, it's how massive that would be. It's a big game even if it feels empty, you know. Um, but Which I, makes you it know, worse. <laughs> I know it really does. Yeah. But like, you know, I know that is a thing. But at the same time, you know, it, yeah, I'll I'll think about it. Disco Elysium is definitely like one that I was like, yeah, that was one that I really wanted to look into because it was definitely up my alley. <laughs> I just mm. haven't, so I might definitely put some money into that one instead. Just. I just, I, I have so little time and, you know, I have the money, but I, I'd rather spend my money more wisely. <laughs> and then I mean games that aren't broken, <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, but you definitely won't go, those two are good options. Especially Disco yeah. Elysium because yeah. I know what you like and Disco Elysium is yeah. definitely off Yeah, yeah. I, rem- mm-hmm. I remember just mm-hmm. looking it up and I went, oh, this just has Sarah written all over it. The only difference mm-hmm. is I don't usually play isometric, but it is isometric, right? I'm not crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But whatever. I'll just, old fashioned. Old fa- it's the old fashioned RPG style. Mm. <laughs> and it so, has yeah. a, uh, it, haven't, it, it, it even has like time. Like, there's a clock, and it moves, and certain things happen at certain times. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty exciting. Yeah. It's... All right, does that mean you're timed for missions, or just no, that no, no, they have different... For... Wait, okay. hold up. I'm not really sure. I'm not super... I'm not that far into it yet, but there's something uh-huh. like... um, uh, Oh, the, the mass hall opens at 1, so you can only go into and talk to people there at 1. That kind of thing. Interesting. Gotcha. Oh yeah. No, that's fine. Mm. Um, it's more. I actually don't even mind the idea of timed missions. They just give me anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like even even having a thing that opens at a specific time is an idea I absolutely love and want nothing to do with. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it I... just means I'll be like, I want to do this now, and I can't. <laughs> See, that's the best case scenario. It's the scenario. it's it's so I'm really weird. So maybe it's because um. Nancy Drew games that I grew up with, they had a very similar thing. Um, you had to be very mindful of what times you did things. Now, the Nancy Drew games had a uh, an alarm clock system. So, like, literally, you just, if you needed time to pass, you would just go to bed and wake up at 3 a.m. and do what you needed to do. But they had a time system. Ba- I mean, just even from the basic idea of, I need to talk to the suspect. They're not, he- they're not here in the evening. They go to bed, but I need to talk to them in the morning. Or, I need to search this person's room. They're gone from their room 
between this time and this time. And it wasn't like a hard time management because there weren't like, you had infinite days to solve the mystery. You know, if mm. you've messed up, you could try again. Like that wasn't a problem. But it was an interesting like, I don't want to say challenge, but just kind of a, oh, time management. I got to be a little careful about this. You know, I don't know. It yeah. was an easy I mean, time I, management I, 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 thing. It's weird. I love it on paper because it creates some very interesting things. Mm. I just find mechanically in practice, it's either frustrating, like, oh, I missed my window. I have to wait, boringly. Or there's some mechanic in the game, like, um, like Zelda Oracle of Ages, where you can travel through time. And so it's kind of like, well, then there's not really a time thing because I control time. Mm. Right, 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 for sure. Uh, yeah. Disco in, in Disco Elysium, you can do like a wait thing to pass time quickly. Yeah, oh, so it's kind of like I, I did that, or it. you can choose to read a book that will pass time quickly. I can't remember exactly. I need to get back into it, but like I'm into. So another game that I'm playing right now that I'm really, really enjoying a lot uh, is Immortals Phoenix Rising. What a stupid name. The original yeah, name is so want? much better, which was Gods and Monsters. And I feel like since this is Ubisoft and this game is getting quite a lot of like um, praise and stuff, they're probably going to make sequels for it because it's Ubisoft. If you have Gods and Monsters, you can make Gods and Monsters too. And you can choose like different settings because Immortals Phoenix Rising is uh, Greek. All the Greek mythology. you got your Zeus and stuff. If you make Gods and Monsters... Two, you can choose like different mythology, like Egyptian, blah, right. blah, blah. Right, yeah. Anyways, it has a stupid name, but the game is really good. Like, it's very cartoony. There's like very Saturday morning cartoon humor to it as well, with some like subtext that kids won't understand. So, um, I just like that. It's just kind of like stupid, but it's like kind of fun and funny. Uh, the game is really pretty to look at. It's an open world action RPG um, I wouldn't call it an RPG, but it's an open action game with skill trees and stuff that you can upgrade. The combat's like fun and weighty. The the activities are fun because it's not just killing stuff. I would say 70%, maybe 75% of the side activities are puzzles and not killing stuff, which is, I like. Like, it's just... It... Graphically, it super reminds me of those... Of those uh like action figures you have with the faces that play that game skylanders what am i talking about yes mm. it's like skylanders it really has <laughs> it's, it's very pretty but, to look at I, mean, more, a little more I actually like the humor some someone i understand that it ha it's quite like um i wouldn't say it's juvenile it's not borderlands humor it's not it's not borderlands humor it's like a bit more like a cartoony humor like which is yeah which is fine um the gameplay is actually fun the the, the puzzles are fun to do the action also feels nice. It actually can be quite challenging at times too, the, the action. And the characters are all like well voice acted and, and I, it's just a very nice feeling to play a game that I actually enjoy after Cyberpunk. <laughs> it's just... Fair enough, fair enough. Um, and it's currently... So I'm not really sure if this is the same for all Ubisoft stores, uh, regions, but... The one that I... Because they have like a Southeast Asian region store. I bought it on... Directly from Uplay, Ubisoft. It is 33% off now with a code to give you an extra 21% off. So it was pretty pretty solid amount of discount. Okay. So, so you're yeah. playing it on PC? Yeah, I'm playing it on PC. It on PC? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, PC. It's also on Switch. It yeah, it's on the Switch as well. Person character action game? It's what? It's third person. Yeah, third person, yeah. Third person, yeah. Um, yeah it looks good. It's, uh, I'm not really sure how it runs on Switch, though, so you probably should look it up, like, yeah. how, it, how it performs. Um, but it's, I, I'm just having a lot of fun with it. I do recommend it to people who like, like, Greek mythology or they like a really nice open world action. Um, it's one of the games where I don't mind all the icons. It just means more puzzles for me to do, so... <laughs> I'm not really. It's just it's just fun overall. I would say. Um, I actually bought another Ubisoft game, so I've been a, a bit on a Ubisoft binge, I guess. But I bought the Division Two because it was really cheap. I just wanted like some mindless looter shooter type game to play while I watch, uh, some show in the background. So yeah, mm -hmm. I bought that non-political game that's, you know, all about <laughs> politics, basically. Um. 
<laughs> Did I talk about Watch Dogs Legion? No, you haven't. I've been I, curious about it. I did play that. I did play okay. six hours of it. The reason why I stopped is because the fucking game kept crashing on me. Oh, that sucks. Mm. Oh. So I stopped for a while. I... Uh-huh. Waiting for patches and stuff. And then Cyberpunk came out, and then I played Phoenix. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to hold on to that later. But the reason why I bought Watch Dogs Legion is because I like the concept, and I really enjoy Watch Dogs 2. Like, Watch Dogs 2 was a, actually a really good game. I really yeah, I remember it. you really liked it because yeah. I, I, I was burned too much by one. So I mm. the other ones. Watch Dogs but 2 Legion is looked... definitely much better than one. Yeah, but that's what I, yeah. Like, like most people's criticisms for it, I feel the same way. It has too much shooty shooty bang bang. Yeah. When it's like basically a bunch of kids, all these like hackers are very young, like young adults. Mm-hmm. Sh- Shooting security guards just feels wrong. There's that whole like dissonance. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. um, Watch Dogs Legion is a game that had a really cool concept, but the execution was is flawed. So it feels gotcha. like, so it has a really really cool concept. I feel you can play as anyone, you can recruit anyone, but it kind of stops there. I feel like that can be. Um, expanded upon so something like since I can have so many different characters right with different specialities I feel like they should have done missions that can allow you to play multiple characters at one time for the mission so Mm -hmm. have somebody that can so there's like people okay so there are these big drones that are used by construction people uh, to carry like heavy boxes and stuff but mm-hmm. you can go on to the drone and you can fly into a uh, a compound or whatever. So that's like something that certain people can do. Uh, you have lo- your hacker people. Also, another thing, it says that you can recruit almost anyone. And I think it says you can recruit everyone. You can recruit everyone and they have all their own like things they can do. But all of them can hack. So okay. there's also that feeling of they kind of play the same ish. Some of them they will have like assault mm-hmm. weapons. Some of them they have better hacking skills. Some of them have access to the construction drone thing. Sure, but they all can hack. So it feels like samey in the end. I remember mm-hmm. read someone reading that part of the issue too is the drone is always the safest and best option. Yeah, like I've been using can the drone do quite it. A, I use the drone quite a bit before I stop. <laughs> Um, and so that 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 was kind of the concern I. So I feel I like, like they could have done a bit more into specializing, so not everybody can hack. Maybe maybe it's only basic yeah. hacking, and some people can do more advanced hacking. Um, maybe some people are better at lock picking doors or something. Uh, right. So maybe have so like in GTA Five, the they there's like five main heists you can do story missions that require all three of the main characters to be part of it and you can switch through the three of them seamlessly so one person will be doing like a sniping position another one will be like infiltrating so that's like the whole you know it feels cool because there's different roles to it and i feel like Watch Dogs legion should have done that i know it's not easy because in gta 5 it's like a story mission is very scripted and stuff but i think what Watch Dogs legion could have done was to go more into a before i infiltrate a big building to get something maybe have a planning phase so i can choose which characters i want to bring maybe three or four and then choose different entry points that kind of thing it's, yeah games have done like you're that. making a team like um what's that game swat like that swat game yeah before you go into a mission you have a planning phase i feel like you can do something to trigger the planning phase and then maybe have like a few people you can choose what they want to do you can um uh what you call that switch between them seamlessly and i feel that would have made experience much better because right now it feels like the whole recruiting everybody is just a gimmick and not really fleshed out yeah i i i can i can definitely understand that because it's so it's too bad because i loved their concept of you know everyday people whose access to everyday things is what makes them useful. So, like, mm. the construction guy, mm. you know, yeah. that's super useful. He has, you know, maybe it's like he automatically has access to certain construction sites or can use certain construction equipment, yeah. you know? Yeah, uh, that's also that, where 
people have like different uniforms and they can go into certain buildings without getting um without the alarm being triggered but that's also the whole part of like if you get too close to somebody they will like a hitman thing if you get too close to somebody they will see like oh you're not supposed to be here like of course but i'm wearing yeah. the uniform man like just yeah whatever how do, how can you t- how do you know my face <laughs> it's just you don't have the face of evil it's such an interesting um, concept i did have fun with whatever before i stopped but it just feels like it could have been so much more just could have been so much more. yeah that's kind of was the the kind of feel i was getting um from what i had heard too which is too bad because and i think what's hard is the concept they wanted to do i think was a little big mm. um and i i think um you know, they. I, I feel like there's all these cool ideas they could have done, but I could also see the limitations that they were trying to do in gameplay. Another thing that my, I had someone who really liked it did mention that they, they overall liked the game, but they actually said because there was so much, like, you know use and lose with the people you know mm. like you would you would have them and then you could easily lose them because it happened so often um he kind of was like i didn't really feel super attached to anybody and it mm. made the ending feel kind of weird because it didn't really matter who was there you know what i mean it didn't yeah. matter who like k- k- and, got um, there that's why i couldn't finish banner saga for the same reason <laughs> oh. oh it's one of those games where you can have like random characters. The tactic scene with permadeath. Oh, yeah. okay. So, um, all the characters are voiced, but they have like a few archetypes, I guess. So that's like the old lady, and then, um, or maybe mature lady, and then you see this, and one of my black uh, black lady characters have the same voice with my Russian lady character, and it's just like, what? <laughs> it's just kind of. It, that's also the problem with that. That's just that. The weirdness when it comes to have multiple people and just, I don't know. I just feel like, I just feel like I wish the mechanic to this game became the next nemesis system from the, from Shadow of War. It became like, oh my God, this super cool new mechanic and Mm. more games should have it, that kind of thing, which was what a lot of people were thinking when it comes to, when it came to the nemesis system from the Mordor Mm -hmm. games, the Shadow the lotteries game and and that system was actually well fleshed out like i feel mm-hmm. like that one was really well made but this one just had so much potential that was not realized and it just feels very it was disappointing but the game overall was fun and i kind of had more fun with it but that's cyberpunk still <laughs> <laughs> it's just oh, fun to go, go around and mess with people and hacking you know it's just mm-hmm. but but yeah uh I feel like they would have had an easier time if they'd done a um, uh, shoot. What's uh, cyber is cyberpunk? Uh, cyberpunk is the is the game. It, what is? It's a pen and paper board game that has tactics video games already, but it's basically like one day in in the world somehow like magic became real. Like certain people became dwarves, some people became centaurs, uh, and then you also on top of that happening, you fast forward like twenty seventy seven. So you have like cyberpunk and magic at the same time cyber mage (laughs) it almost sounds like um oh what's that D &D setting it's not quite cyberpunk i guess all in shadow run i guess is one way shadow run oh okay okay oh it is shadow run okay shadow run (laughs) cyberpunk would have been better if they had just made a shadow run game because (laughs) they could have reused a lot of witcher stuff Yeah, they probably didn't get the rights to it though, because Cyberpunk yeah. twenty seventy seven is based off a tabletop game. Mm. Yes. Um, and so actually, that point is interesting because I am seeing a lot of like a sudden surge of cyberpunk experts now um, on Twitter. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing right. they know a lot about the genre. It's just because they are talking a lot about it now because the new game is out. I'm just making a joke. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but how much of the criticisms towards this game? can also be on the tabletop. Like, I I, I, I have no clue. I have no clue. I'm just wondering how much of the blame can be put on to the source. How much of the source also is not very true to the cyberpunk motif or themes of, like, corporate... (laughs) You know what I'm saying. I'm just wondering, like... And Mike Pondsmith was a consultant on the game. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what kind of... 
He probably doesn't care because the game's the game is getting nines and tens, which I don't fucking understand how. Like I feel like the I feel like the reviews are not playing the same game. Yeah, I I have a hard <laughs> yeah maybe I have a hard time with that only because when I think I guess to be fair to be fair when I think like I as also have heard the supposed like cyberpunk critics or whatever like of the world building and to be honest it's one of those things where I'm like. Okay, but like, what describes a setting? I mean, at the at what point are you gonna try to n- be nitty gritty about like a setting? It's like trying to get nitty gritty over a mm-hmm. fantasy setting that doesn't have elves. You know what I mean? Like, it just feels a little disingenuous after a while, because like when I think of how much could be blamed on the tabletop, like I think about the concerns we just raised that have nothing to do with the tabletop as a whole. Like, yeah. So I'm they, not specifically you know, talking about the gameplay. Yeah. I'm specifically talking about how like. A lot of criticisms of the teams as well, like that's, um, so yeah, like guess... about not having or not a lot of criticisms on like corporate exploitation or something like, for example. You know, I think it's one of those things. You know, it that's a good question, and it's funny because it kind of raises a kind of a bigger question about tabletop settings. Um, I think, as you guys know, I've done tabletop for a very long time. Not that I've done like every setting out there. I have not, and I don't necessarily have encyclopedic knowledge of all tabletop games. But in some ways, you could say I have more experience with it than video games. And it it, it raises an interesting question that like I just never really experienced myself. There's a lot of discussion, and I don't mean to side step but just to show an example what i'm talking about um i recently like on twitter allowed to see dungeons and dragons related things because i'm a tabletop player why not i was hoping like to see fan art of people's like you know characters and stuff like that and funny stories um (laughs) what i got a lot of was a lot of people expressing the innate racism uh in the the raw so uh rules as written um or just even mm-hmm. the world as written f- of of D. and it's one of those things that's like you know at, at first it was kind of like a what the hell it's a tabletop game but you know i looked into it and i was like okay unfortunately a lot of what's happening is based is unfortunately kind of entrenched due to its inspiration coming from lord of the rings which did have some uh, racism mm-hmm. as well <laughs> um you know along with uh the original creators with what they were kind of feeling about too and it's kind of stuck there and it's one of those things that's just hard for me because you know when it came to playing these games i was always used to playing with people who didn't necessarily like go exactly by the rules on those people you know what i mean mm. like if they were things to kind of right. take and create and go differently and do whatever it's super the point yeah exactly and so i think it's so hard you know and again maybe i'm just not the right person to ask but i think it's so hard for for you know me to be like should i blame the original tabletop you know for some like to criticize the original tabletop for you know the failings of the game and that's just such a hard question for me because in my head it's like okay the video game was if you want to use this analogy one dm's interpretation of the game yeah i guess yeah. one interpretation of the setting um and i'm not saying like the tabletop is glorious and needs to be worshipped i'm not saying any of that i'm just saying like it's really I don't know, that's just really hard to do <laughs> um, when you think of just the idea of, like, this is a game where someone wrote a story versus this is someone who, who created a mm. setting with story options, but yeah, at the end of the day, true. it's your choice. I don't know. It's just a mm. hard It's a hard thing to ask. But like I, like I said in the beginning, it's really hard for me to take – it's really hard for me to really um, go in and be like, oh, yeah, this, you know, this tabletop setting is wrong because of these innate things because in my head I'm going – well, I can disagree with those and do something else, but I don't know. That's just me, um, and it, that's I know yeah. that's kind of tricky. It's very different from The Witcher, where it's like linear books. Yes, Every, yes, everything, yes. Everything is already built by the author, and mm-hmm. I'm wondering, is that why the game is so much better? They already had all this world fleshed out, and like the characters are already like established characters. Sure, The Witcher Three, I believe. So I'm not super sure, but I believe the Witcher games are after the books. They are. I can't explain this because my brother got super into them. Yeah, I stopped reading the book after like the first one. Third yep, he, one, he, I'm not sure if he actually read the books. He definitely like read a lot about the books and he played all three games. He actually recently Damn, he played Witcher like, 1. Jesus. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> Some and he janky actually recently. Shit. 
He'd be the first to tell you. Um, and he actually, as in, like, I think six months ago, he replayed all three of them at once um, to prepare. Or it was it was uh, because of the show. He was inspired oh, by right, the show. Right, right, so, right. So anyway, um, so according to him, basically, yes, they take place way after the books. Mm. Um, you could, I mean, I kind of jokingly almost see them as like fan fiction in a way because mm. <laughs> like the the, the kind of i mean and i'm not saying that to like not take them seriously at all i'm just saying because of where they came from because basically what from the story what i heard was they wanted to use this world in their games and they basically kind of like got pseudo permission from the original author but they didn't like include everything from the books in there because the, yeah. i guess the whole it's premise of the story Yes, exactly. I guess the premise of the of the games is that um, Geralt like loses his memory, hmm. and so he kind of has hmm. to like rediscover the things that he did. And so there are references to the book, but he never like so he might meet characters like from the book or referencing them, but he's not necess- But it's not necessarily like you're going to play a section from this book in the games. Yeah, yeah. It takes place later. Yeah. It's also the reason, apparently, why Yennefer wasn't introduced till the third game, because I guess apparently the game creators were trying to, like, tiptoe around the author and not, like, piss him off too much, apparently. So that's why, like, you even had, like, new characters and stuff like that that mm. showed up. So, But, yeah, they're but supposed think, to take place way after. I think there's after. a difference between writing fanfic of an established universe with established characters and will already built for you versus a tabletop where you have to kind of make it on your own. Right, exactly. I, and that's I, probably I, I agree why the quality you. is so different as well. Because I wasn't really happy with the, the writing and the story mm-hmm. and the characters as well in Cyberpunk. So I'm not really sure there's it could something, be that. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said. And this is something I uh, pro- I, mean, I very much believe in as someone who, who enjoys doing creative activities. Um, there's something there's sometimes more creativity within constraints that's why sometimes in those like fan fictiony ideas you get some amazing you know ideas you know how many people have probably not that necessarily have read like fan fiction from game of thrones but how many people came up with better endings <laughs> than the movie and than the also show that's did the whole point of like some people write fan fiction to give the fans what they want so right exactly if there's a bunch of people and, wanting a certain thing probably that will mm-hmm. resonate with more people Maybe mm-hmm. even that's why some people will, yeah. you know, like it more, that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. There's just sometimes for some people, not everybody, but there are just some people that do work better with certain constraints, you know. I already know what the main character is going to be like because I have a bunch of books established of how his character is. Okay, great. Well, now I can make a story where there's still choices, but they're all constrained within his personality and what he would likely choose um, versus, you know, completely yeah, open world. Exactly. Versus, like, completely open world. And both ideas are good, you know? Um, But they are, there are different ways you have to make them. And I think what, you know, honestly, see, I think there might be an argument to be had that maybe uh, CD Projekt Red may not do so well. Like, when I think of, like, decent open world create your own character, I think of, like, Skyrim. I know Skyrim's not the best game, but I freaking loved that game like i play it's the most hours i play than any game but it is purely just to create your own character blank slate and go out about the world not every choice matters but that's okay you know you're kind of just being yourself and and doing the world and doing and, things um, that do matter but that's the games open world yes. rpgs and it feels like an yeah. rpg yeah feels and like an rpg um lots of well-written characters good dialogue everything I even mm-hmm. enjoy. I also enjoy Fallout Four, which is considered like one of the weaker, but right. it's actually yeah. pretty good. And I, I'm thinking of like yeah. starting New Vegas since I have like a few days off. <laughs> I have so many games yeah, exactly. I want to play right now. But, but they they're great at that. And I feel they're like wonderful at people are scoring this, these games to justify waiting for this game for like seven years to justify spending does... sixty dollars. And I feel like yeah. The mainstream reviewers especially giving sc- because these scores matter because it goes up to metacritic and then we'll you know i feel like yeah. they're doing a disservice with scoring the game so high because honestly the game there are some subjective things but it's objectively not very good in a lot of things and i feel like yeah, I'm, I'm very very disappointed in that as well like i'm not sure how yeah. much of it is just them going off of and apparently some people are scoring games on the potential 
of the game having right. of the patches. Uh, I'm like, and that, and you can't do that. You, can't, you have to score of the. You have to review the game that is now. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it's it's hard to say like objectively bad because I know people who are very picky yeah. game players who have genuinely enjoyed themselves. They are fully able to admit its flaws, but there's just something yeah, like, about its gameplay that's satisfying. Like I said, I've played bad so. games. I can admit its flaws. I can even say this game that I really enjoy and love and spend hundreds of hours on is a six out of ten. <laughs> like it's just yeah. That's the thing. I feel like there are some and there's. And probably because I've played like so many better games this year alone, <laughs> probably yeah, like in, Red in Dead Redemption my, it, Two, yeah, so much better. And before I played Cyberpunk, I played The Last of Us Two, which I forgot to mention, <laughs> which was amazing. Right, yeah, such yeah, an amazing. I, I don't know why. I mean, I know why so many people hated it, but um, there was like that woman and all the muscles just feel so uh, but uh, yeah, Sounds which funny. is the weirdest thing. Because okay, so like. I just wanted to mention that they were like, oh, this person can have so many muscles. It's a post-apocalypse. You need a lot of protein. And one of the scene, you go through the camp and what do you see? A bunch of dead animals hanging, waiting to be butchered. Like just so much protein. It's, All the protein yeah. is just hanging there. Just, <laughs> just can people stop trying to be like, the, like when we have a cool male protagonist, it's like, that's cool. But the minute we have a female protagonist who's not just super sexy and weak, all of a sudden we have to inject realism. It's like, also, just like, stop. They complain about a muscular man. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Just the Last of Us 2. I did not play The Last of Us 1, so I did not have the the same connection to the characters that a lot of these people had from the first game so i can mm-hmm. understand some of them being upset that a certain character died super early in a very violent way by the way um mm-hmm. but damn that game yeah it had all the problems with all the crunch and all that i understand um i, I bought it like super cheap from a local seller so it's not like naughty dog got like 100 percent of my money or whatever uh, so but the game was God damn that story and the, the Cyberpunk is one of the most overrated games ever. Like yeah, seriously. I think yeah, I'll be I'll be curious to see what happens. Um and I mean it really it just has everything going for it. it's just not not good. Um my poor my poor wife uh gave up. She did download it, and it literally... She cannot get past the character creation screen. She tried twice uh, to re-download on it. On what platform? PC. PC. No idea. PC is the best we platform, by the way. We genuinely don't know what's wrong. Um, her computer's a little older than mine, but not by much. Um, I'm using, yeah, like, a 1070 same. i... I can't remember what processor I have. Yeah, not I, like, I'm not, it's not my, super new as well. Yeah, mine hasn't had any hasn't had any issues, no loading issues whatsoever. Um, but yeah, it <laughs> so it's it it hasn't had the best luck around here. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have had friends who've tried it and they're like, yeah, the bugs are off. And to be honest with you, some of the bugs you have to deal with, unless it was like a like unless I heard it was a way better game, I don't even want to deal with some of those bugs. Like that's, I have to commend some of these thing. people's patience. I feel patience. like if the game had no <laughs> bugs or very little bugs, I feel more people would criticize it for the game itself mm. maybe i've seen back and forth uh, mm. truly online i've seen some vitriol online on on some of the bug stuff um especially people who are just really graphic junkies that get really uh, anal about that kind of stuff um when i'm like there's bigger bugs to worry about guys but i'm i've seen back and forth i will be honest with you um some people getting real on them for certain things that might even be a little unfair and you know other people kind of just saying it's perfect. So I've definitely seen both online. Not gonna lie, but I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's it's something. Definitely, I think I could see how I think for some people definitely feels overrated. <laughs> it, honestly, my recommendation is to wait for a sale, fifty percent off. That's once it reaches that, the bugs should be fairly okay. That's my plan because I'm curious. I'm still curious about it, but like it's just I don't have time for this. Mm, you know. Yeah. Come back. That's also to me that. When it's not just the money. That's also the time you need to spend on it. Yeah. I wish I can yeah. get that twenty four hours back. I know. Like, come back to me when you're done. Come on. You know. I, that's just how I feel about it. And again, like, if it if it weren't for the fact that maybe 
you know, I don't really play as much games these days. You know, I kind of time sink my hours into just simpler games these days. Like, I go back to 14 and stuff like that. Um, then this may not have been such a big deal for me, but I'm sorry. You know, I... <laughs> I am really, like, careful with what I buy these days on games because of price points and because of my time. And no, I'm, I'm not going to spend my time on this. <laughs> I got other games I'll enjoy. And so. a lot of the people talking about how it would be a No Man's Sky kind of thing. No Man's Sky is different. It's a sandbox game. And you can just add a bunch. They added base building to it, for fuck's sakes. Like... I know. Yeah, that was an addition too. after the game release. It wasn't like... Multiplayer. Yeah, I mean, sure, they had the foundations built for it to be able to handle it, but it's not a story-driven RPG. It's a sandbox game if at its heart. If it was on a little more sale, I'd pick it up this this winter sale, but still like $30. Which is yeah, I've never seen it below like 50%. I've never seen it like higher discount than 50%. Usually it's just 50%. Right, right. Um, yeah, if it ever hits 20, I'll buy it. Hmm. Probably soon. But it's been, what, what, five years now? Next year, probably. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, August 21st, 2016, says Steam. So, like, yeah, that's just... Oh, uh, well. It's just it's just too bad. What did you play for? F- did you play something yeah, that's not cyberpunk? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I played, I played Hades. Um, I've been playing a lot of World of Warcraft. The um, new expansion is out. Yeah, the, new- yeah, the big problems right now with it aren't the game's fault at all. It's the, it's the community. The community's not that great. Um, oh. I mean, people are okay. The, the problem I'm having is I feel like I'm probably pretty averagely geared. So World of Warcraft, um, your character's like overall gear strength is called eye level. Um, yes. Yep. It's basically just the average of all of your pieces of equipped gear. Well, not equipped, best in slot. So if you like switched your gear, it would say like, "Hey, your equipped eye level is not at your maximum potential eye level." Um, so the problem is, I th- I feel like I'm pretty averagely geared, maybe even a little higher than average, and p- I just can't get in groups to do things with random people. I can basically only get in groups with friends I personally know, um, because people just expect like, "Oh yeah, to join my group, you have to have already beaten the boss." It's like, mm. But I need to get in a group to beat the boss and it's like well this is a you know these are all uh like like you know we, we beat it like first day one kind of stuff it's like this is so hard um so i'm kind of giving up on that so i'm just doing my, uh, the other content that i can do uh there was this minor controversy where um they rolled out in wow a basically a mini roguelike system so there's this thing called the tower of torghast and when you go into it um it uh you get like these powers that kind of like break your normal powers. Like this move now does this extra thing. And so it's kind of like luck based based off of, off of which good ones you get or not. And basically every week since the expansion came out, they've been tweaking the tower because it's been like either insanely easy or insanely hard. And just like, it's never been in the middle. Like certain classes can solo it no problem because of the way scaling works mm-hmm. and because of, like some of their powers are just OP and certain classes just cannot even do it at all. And when you when you do the Tower of Torghast, you choose like which floor you want to do, like one through eight, eight being the hardest, um, and you get more of this resource you can only get from the tower by choosing harder difficulties. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been weird. Uh, lately, it's it's been on the easier end, which I appreciate. I'd much rather have it be easier than harder, um, because the problem is like if you sink, like the problem is, when it, when it's hard, the problem is you spend forty minutes getting to the final boss. And the final boss just crushes you, and you get absolutely nothing for your time. Uh. Um, so it's, I think it's in an okay state right now. Um, that's pretty much it for video games. It's Hades, and wow. Uh, is yeah, Mandalorian finished? Fortunately, last episode yes. out. Okay. Yes, Dunzo. yes, yes. Yeah. I'm gonna oh. watch it now. And they announced a Boba Fett show. Yes. Oh. Well, well, they're doing a spin-off series. Oh, with Boba they did Fett, yes. do that whole like yeah. um, investor call or something and announce a bunch of shit, did they? Right? Yeah. I'm, yeah, they announced a ton of crap. Yeah, I, I do not care too much about Disney, and... Marvel, Star Wars stuff as much as anymore. <laughs> it just gets Fair too enough. much after a while. But I am interested to see um, Ironheart, Iron Woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, What's yeah. That uh, the black. Teenager? It's the black female. Yeah, I think teenager? she's like a, te- like a she's a she's a black teenager genius who started in the comics. Yeah, she um oh, people did not in the like comics, that. she worked 
Yeah, she worked for for Tony Stark in the comics. She, people were really hoping that. Um, I see. I can't think of her name. She's from Black Panther. This the sister. Uh, I can't think of her. Yeah, I don't know her name. Su- 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 Sumi. Su- Suri. Kind of crazy. IRL. Yeah, she. Yeah. Wait, what? Uh, Don. She. So yeah. Th- anti vax or something. Anti vax. Oh my god. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> she came out as a little anti vax, or at least like not like outright like. I'm against vaccines, but very much like we need to be careful and think about what's in them. Or you just should research. Like that. There are yeah. people who spend I, their lives researching this. You don't she, need to research anything. Reading I Wikipedia like is not the same as researching. Yeah, I feel like she also said something that might have been a little transphobic. I don't remember. All I know is apparently I, Don. That might be right. I all I know is Don Shu, Cheadle. The character like, is Shuri, a, a, played by Leticia yeah. Wright. Yeah. Okay. Pa- yep, and apparently, um, Don Cheadle. Letitia like, Wright deletes social media called, accounts after yeah. And talk with Don Cheadle. Video. Yeah, Don Cheadle apparently gave her apparent reportedly. Don Cheadle, I guess, talked to her, and then she took down that video. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, Don Cheadle but, seems pretty cool. Yeah, mm. Don Cheadle's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. Um, but w- the one thing I did watch that I really want to talk about, although I don't, not for very long, uh, I watched Cats. Did Live you? Oh my no. god. No. Why? Start How are finish. you alive? Why did... why? Yes, why? <laughs> Is your time worth nothing? <laughs> what How long was it? Were like two, high? three hours? It's only an hour and 40. Really? Oh, is it? Oh, okay. But the musical was pretty long. Longer. I think it is pretty long. And it but... felt like because <laughs> there's no plot. There's no, no plot. No, there is it's no just plot. It's a sequence of different new character cats yeah. thinking about themselves and then they fuck off for the rest of the movie. Yeah. There's no consequences. Do you... Like random yeah. stuff kind of happens in between, but there's really no plot. Do you the care? Cats, like, I'm the fat cat. We're the burglar cats. Yeah. I'm the whatever cat. And that's the whole movie. Do you, do you care like, to know why it has no plot? Is it because uh, the writer's on cocaine? Maybe. Um, so <laughs> the writer, so it's basically the story. So as you guys know, it's based off a musical, stage musical. Um, I've actually it never. It really is. Like the songs are unchanged. Oh, yeah. I've never seen the stage musical. Apparently my mother really liked it because she used to sing Memory to me all the time as a kid. Um, That's and... the only good thing from the movie. Yeah, pretty much. much. Um, it's the only good song. But anyway, um, so basically. Yeah. So basically, the the play is based off a collection of cat poems by somebody. Um, T.S. Eliot, I think. Yes. Yes. So it's not based and off a so musical. It comes from. They say this. Yeah. It's. Well, it's... no, the musical is based off of poems that were never yeah. published. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes. That. That. Okay. So that's why it's yeah about the Jellico cats, and so that's why like the main plot is they're trying to choose. A cat to basically Which, to go to die heaven and to get die and go. Or something? What? Yeah. They're all competing in this musical to get chosen yes. to die. It's weird. Yes. Yes. That's all I can know. I've never seen it. I've, never, I've only done. I've never actually seen research. it. I only know the one song from it. Everybody knows what song yeah. I'm talking about. Everybody only knows memory. Yeah. Memory. It's a really good song. I, uh, I kind of liked. What's his name? Crumble Shanks, the railway cat. Rumble yeah. Shanks, the railway cat. Uh, I don't yeah. know. Anyway, so like. so yeah, why did you watch it and how was it? Um, I wanted to, I was curious, I guess, morbid <laughs> curiosity. Uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend anybody else spending their time watching it. I mean, it was kind of fascinating, like just like in a like a train wreck. Like you, like I couldn't believe what I was seeing a lot because it was so weird. Did you watch the the fixed version? Wasn't there like some kind of fix they made with the graphics no or something? In the version I saw, oh. they yeah they replaced the cat buttholes. Mm. Um, I heard that the trailer for the movie that everyone saw took them like four months to CGI up. Holy hell! They had to they, then they had six months after that to finish the rest of the movie. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, that's so that's. That's partly why it looks like weirdness and there's the sense of scale is not it's one of the least constant things i've ever seen like sometimes That's the cats idea. are like uh like like a cat on its hind legs is as tall as a bar stool like sure i guess it's a kind of tall cat and sometimes a cat is next to the statue that's a 60 pound cat like that's what that would mean. Like, <laughs> yeah what like, it's like you never see people in the world there's like wanted signs for for the idris ilba cat and it's like are there i don't know if the like it's what the movie 
makes it pretty clear to me that they're supposed to be just cats. Like, this is what cats do when there aren't people around. But it's like, there's so much weird infrastructure and scale stuff. Like, it seems like it's almost like a cat world, so mm. I don't really know. Some mm. cats can literally do magic. They can teleport people and and stuff. Like, it's it's crazy. It's so crazy. Um, there's a scene where Rebel Wilson's just eating little tiny cockroaches, which are also played by, like, ballerinas. Like What the oh fuck? Okay. And then she, like, zips her, her fur down to reveal basically the same costume, but now with, like, a tutu on? Like, like the cats cats wear fur coats. Like, it's, oh, my goodness. It doesn't make any sense. It's so crazy. Was the money so, so good that so many of these I wouldn't recommend it. well-known names wanted to do it? They That's don't, I don't know, because they don't talk about it. Like, I've never heard because any... I don't blame them, but why do it in the first place? Ian McKellen is in it. Taylor Swift is in it. Taylor um, Swift is in it. As so is I, G- thought, I thought the main cat in the beginning of the movie was Taylor Swift for a good while. I apparently a lot of people did, but no, <laughs> she's the she's like the super sexy cat or something. I don't jello. I mean, apparently all the other cats like the way they move is, but she has like no lines. She has like five lines in the whole movie. Yeah, probably they just want her to sing one of the songs. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. She's, I mean, she's clearly a trained ballerina, I think. Unless, actually, I don't know how much of the dancing I'm seeing is the actors and how much is dancers that they just, like, deep fake the faces over later. Mm. I I would be surprised if it was Taylor Swift dancing. I like her music. I don't no, like... No, not her. No. I meant the, the main character. Oh, I'm so sorry. Main character, I think, is played by an actual, like, theater person. So that might be legit. She like she could dance. Yeah, yeah. that might be legit. I, know, I looked up some of the other cats... Uh, and they were definitely theater dancer types, like the Skimble Shanks, the tap dancing railway cat. <laughs> yeah. Also, now I have all their names in my head, so that's great. That's, yeah, that's uh, like information you didn't need. <laughs> Mr. Mistopheles and McCavity. I don't That's all I know, actually. I that my ideas. Oh, no, what was one of them? Um, Mungo Jerry. Mungo Jerry, who I think, I think Cats, the musical, came after... The musician Mungo Jerry from like the 60s. So <laughs> I think that's a reference to that probably. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I did watch Santa Claus 2. What's it called? Not Santa Claus. Saving Christmas 2. The, it's, a, it's, a, it's a movie that I watched the first one last year be only because Santa was played by Kurt Russell. <laughs> and his wife, his real wi- wife, Goldie Hawn, plays Mrs. Claus. And gotcha. the first one was pretty good actually. I watched the second one. And it was still okay. Um, it's a lot weirder. The main plot point is um, there's an elf played by the kid from Deadpool 2. Uh-huh. And Hunt for the Wilder People, whatever his name is, the New Zealand kid. Okay. Um, but he's older now because it's been real world time. So he's like, in real life, he's like 17. He's clearly going through puberty, which is kind of funny. Um and he wants to, like, he's turned into a human and wants to turn back into an elf. So there's this weird, like, rivalry between him and Kurt Russell. Not Kurt Russell. Yeah, Kurt. Wait, is that the right name? Yeah, Kurt Russell? Russell's the right name. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's pretty much it for me. Star Wars was fine. I'm glad it's over. Just because, like, I don't like, I don't know why I watch weekly shows. Like, it, like I should have done what and just wait for it to all be done. So I was glad <laughs> to not have to, like... This waiting game. <laughs> oh, I, I enjoy, um, I don't mind with Mandalorian, but that's because, like, I have a, my, all my housemates watch it together. Like, it's like our Friday night thing. Mm. So, you know, it, it is kind of a thing, and we really enjoy, I, I really enjoy The Mandalorian quite a bit. It definitely um, depends on the content, because there's a show I watch called Taskmaster, which airs weekly, but I'm two months behind, two seasons behind, oh and gosh. I force myself to watch it weekly. Um, and that's because it is completely episodic. For Mandalorian, where it's like this overarching thing where like, I gotta see what happens next week, it's harder for me. <laughs> no way. I yeah. Like. It's so funny because like Mandalorian, I didn't mind waiting week by week because it was kind of like, ooh, it was like speculation because we always kept ahead of it. Harley Quinn was a hard one to do weekly just because mm, it's such a amazing. bingeable show. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a show like it, yeah. yeah exactly like cause i think i told you guys i was like just wait till you can get it all at once i swear because it's gonna be 
hard as hell trying to trying to wait. And it is. I mean, that one wasn't so bad because, again, we all really enjoyed Harley Quinn. So it was kind of like, like – so basically, like, every Friday night was like, okay, we got to watch Harley Quinn. We got to watch Mandalorian. Like, that was kind of our thing. Um, but Mandalorian was kind of cool because, like, we would spend the week kind of speculating because we're all Star Wars nerds in different degrees. Um, but then – but with Harley Quinn, it was just like, I just want to know what happens next. Oh, my word. <laughs> I can't stand it. So I, I get it. But it is uh it is interesting. Yeah. Um but you sure? Did you watch anything? Did I watch you anything? Need to stuff? Uh, I watched really weird anime, but I'm afraid to Wonder admit Woman's it. Coming out. Yes. Is it Doctor Stone? It's a Wonder know? Woman no, it's coming out on HBO as well, right? Or something? Yes, HBO on Christmas yeah. Day, so the 25th. So kind of coming out at the same time with the theater release. I think so, yeah. Mm, okay. Nobody should be going to the theaters, actually. No should see it in a theater. Oh, no, I'm not going to a theater. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the, those in New Zealand can. <laughs> yeah, some places can. Yeah. But yeah, like... Sure. Yeah. Some places in the world. But we, not but we all know not these not kinds of uh, movies. The main um, market for it is the US, so... <laughs> U.S. and China, I think, right? Yeah, China usually, yeah. Probably. U.S. and China. Yeah. But I'm not, really sh- yeah. I'm not really following the cases oh. there. There know. are two other Christmas movies they watched. Um, <laughs> oh, then there, was, there were big deals. Um, I watched a new Disney movie that just came out called Godmothered, which is pretty good. It oh, how was, was about, that? Um, yeah. I liked it. I would recommend oh. you should see Godmother. I mean, oh, it's okay. Sweet. Okay. Christmas movie. Like, it's not going to blow your mind, but, like, right. if you want a Christmas movie and you haven't seen one before, this one before, it's... Godmother. Okay. It's basically Elf, the story of Elf, yes. but less annoying. Yeah. Because it's, like, a godmother in training. Um, okay, okay. And, like, oh, we don't... Nobody wants godmothers anymore. We're going to have to shut the program down. And so she she finds this old letter, like, saying, I help me find a happily ever after. She's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go answer this girl's, like, wish. And then people will realize we want godmothers again. Um, but she doesn't realize is that letter was sent like 20 years ago. So she finds like old, like 27 year old, like Amy Adams or whatever, who's like, yeah, my definition of happily ever after is not the same as it was anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I gotta watch it. That sounds good. cute. Oh. That's cute. That's cute. Yeah. Um, speaking of Chris, oh, what was the other one? I actually have a Christmas movie to share. <laughs> Uh, the other one, I don't remember the name. I think it's a Netflix original. I only watched it because it stars Forrest Whitaker and Keegan-Michael Key. Oh. <laughs> and <laughs> the um, uh, Forrest Whitaker plays a, um, like, magical... He's not, he's not supposed to be magical, but he's, he's a toy inventor. But he's making such, like technologically advanced stuff he's clearly magic <laughs> um and jordan peele steals his ideas and makes money off of them jordan peele um, or keegan it's a musical sorry <laughs> uh keegan keegan michael keegan. okay jordan peele is i don't think he's definitely not in the film i don't know if he's involved at all i'm, I, I'm saying jordan peele because i'm also watching um i have one episode left of lovecraft country um I still need to watch that which one. he's a producer on um, but so, so the, this one, the Forrest Whitaker one, it's very high production values. It's very pretty. I like the music. Um, it definitely pushed my tolerance for, um, uh, is suspension of disbelief the right word? Like, so anytime they're doing like, they're, like the main premise is like Forrest Whitaker's, he's good at inventing toys. What's this? His granddaughter, who's a girl, is also good at math, and she can she can like do math in her head and throw snowballs into weird things. <laughs> like I like I have I have a certain amount of tolerance for things like get the gyroscopic stabilizers working. Like sure that's fine. What kind of broke my patience was like Forrest Whitaker like doing a calculation. He's like showing it to his granddaughter. And he's like, what's this? She's like, oh, that's the formula for the square root of amazing. He's like. That's exactly right. It's just like, what? That's not math. Like, that inspired kids with bullshit. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, how mad it makes you. Is it Jingle That's Jangle, funny. A Christmas Journey? That's what it is, Jingle Jangle. It stars Ricky Martin. <laughs> Ricky Martin plays... So, the first thing that Forrest Whitaker invents that's going to change the world is basically... He creates life. He creates a fully sentient AI matador voiced by Ricky Martin who turns evil. But he's not really a main character. He just kind of gets Keegan-Michael Key to like, hey, you should steal me and we can do things. And he's like, okay. <laughs> like, 
sure. It's, it's so silly. I'd also kind of recommend that one, but in definitely more of an ironic way. I think it's probably great for children, um, but it's 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 really weird. I mean, the costumes are so good mm. in it, though. Like, it looks like really high good. production it's values. A very well made movie. Mm. Yeah, the music's good. It's because it's set like in not quite steampunk, but like Victorian times, and there's kind oh. of like steampunky elements. It's very like Dickensian. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, I forgot. I did watch a Christmas movie. I watched Happiest Season, the lesbian one. Um, what kind of name is that? Happiest Season, the lesbian I know. one? No. <laughs> <laughs> the lesbian season, you know, fall, summer, spring. It's lesbian. called Happiest Season. I thought you guys had heard of it. I'm, oh. I'm sorry. I haven't heard of it. Th- oh, I okay. The sorry. I apologize. It's sorry. Maybe it's just all over my To be my fair, I would watch okay. a movie called The Happiest Season, the lesbian one. So it's called the happiest mm. season. The reason it's um, kind of like oh, is it's it is basically a uh, like a Hallmark lesbian film, right? Um, and so the premise it has uh, Kristen Stewart in it, mm. and um, unfortunately I don't know the other actors. I just There's know Aubrey Kristen Plaza, Stewart, <laughs> Alison Brie, and Mackenzie yes, Davis. Yes, Aubrey Plaza. Yes. Quite, Thank you. Yep, yep, yep. Quite a few. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Levy, I was like, too. I knew there were other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, basic premise: uh, two girls have been in a relationship for about a year now. Um, it's Christmas time. Um, w- the one girl is Kristen Stewart's character. Um, her parents have been dead since she was like nineteen, and so um, you know, for her, Christmas has always been kind of hard because it's not you know she doesn't really have her family as much anymore. Um, while her girlfriend, Christmas was always really important, and so at one point, you know, her her the girlfriend was like, "Oh, maybe you should come to my family for Christmas," but then then and then you know. The first girlfriend's like, oh, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. Christmas has always been whatever. But then the next day, the girlfriend's like, no, 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 I want to spend Christmas with your family. And then, and of course, only in Hallmark fashion, they start driving and the other girl's like, so by the way, I'm not out to my parents. They think you're my roommate. (laughs) So shenanigans, shenanigans, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, You know, overall pretty well done for you know probably kind of a hallmark-esque lesbian movie i you know it's very cute it has a happy ending you know all that stuff is it funny um it's pretty funny yeah Mm. the so there's they kind of have like a gay best friend um and he's like like at the at the beginning because the other part yeah the other part of like the joke is that um the girlfriend who's whose parents had died she's like uh, was going to propose to her girlfriend everything was like yeah i was going to think of you know asking oh. her father that doesn't happen but like it's you know it, that's the whole thing is like it does happen at the end but not then um and so uh and her her friend is like oh yeah way to stick it to the patriarchy like it's just got little millennial you know wow. jokes like that mm. um you know, over the overall, I think they did a pretty good job of being like, hey, you know, this is really hard and tough. At the same time, you know, there can be a happy ending here. It's okay. And it had pretty, had some kind of cool beats uh, like that. My only true complaint, and I don't know how much I should spoil, but like, it, it, the, of course, there's like jealousy because, of course, the one girl's parents um, are trying to set her up with like her high school sweetheart guy who's still into her, and it's super awkward. But then you also find out that Aubrey Plaza's character used to date that girl, but like secretly. But then they had a huge falling out, and so then the other girl starts kind of going out with her. So there's like a little jealousy there, blah blah blah, whatever. Um, and of course, there's the big dramatic reveal, and everyone's like, "Oh!" But then at the end, everyone's accepting, everyone's okay, and like even the message of like the family that's that the the girl who's in the closet about is pretty good. Like how they ended that up too, because it turns out that like there's a bigger family issue and stuff like that. It's kind of complicated. My only problem, my only problem with this film is they provided, so there's a lot of character flaws, obviously, with the girl who's in the closet, because, you know, there's that awkwardness of, like, this is a very personal thing to come out of the closet, but it's also kind of selfish to, like, not be out of the closet when you have a girlfriend kind of thing and have to hide who they are, they have to go back in the closet, and they do some good dialogue. But unfortunately, they kind of presented one major character flaw of the girl in the closet and the movie does not do a good job of referencing it or even really having her come to terms with it. Um, if you guys don't mind me spoiling, I'll, I'll explain. So um, 
basically we find out so i mentioned aubrey plaza and her used to date they basically were best friends and then kind of secretly started dating and then people found out because they were like sending love letters to each other and aubrey plaza's character explains to kirsten stewart's character that yeah so people found one of my love letters to her and they asked her if we were dating and she said no i'm not gay but she aubrey plaza she is and she's just really obsessed with me so and the thing is is like that is a horrible thing like under the bus. really horrible you outed somebody and the Aubrey Plaza's character even says she's like yeah we were never friends again and I was outcasted completely by the school um and never had you know never had friends in high school like I'm fine now like she's fine like she's not like broken to pieces about it but she she was like yeah this is the kind of this is how she is sometimes and it's like it's one of those things that like whoa like the idea that she just outed her friend and then basically dis like disowned her practically and and Kristen Stewart's character like never brings it up like mm. she's never like whoa so it was never really addressed really messed not really. Like, at the end, that one character apologizes to Aubrey Plaza. is like, hey, I am so sorry that this happened. I'm trying to be better. And, like, that's cool. But, like, it's just such an extreme character flaw. Like, one of those, no, I th- I think we're not going to be, with everything else that happens to poor Kristen Stewart as a result of, you know, this girl not going to be out of the closet yet, it's just very much, to me, be a nail on the coffin kind of thing that I was like, I don't think the writers understood, like, how bad big of an issue this is mm. um i don't know that bothered me it was really really hard to like forgive that character and have them have their happy ending because of that everything else i could forgive i could be like yep that that sucks how that happened and she did this yep blah 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 but then they came back but like that was a little too far for me mm. <laughs> that was my only complaint otherwise i mean i know some people do have some issues with it to me most of the issues are typical hallmark romance drama issues so not really going to change but otherwise otherwise it was very cute and very well done and very like oh believe in magic of christmas and lesbian love <laughs> so might be worth a watch if you're curious and if you want to see kristen stewart happy <laughs> would you say it's a rom-com um i like i said the best way to describe it is a hallmark movie like, okay, okay, if yeah. you think of it as a rom-com, yeah, it's definitely comedic, that's for sure. Um, although you're going to want to hate, there's at least two twin kids that are like the uh, the niece and nephew of the girl in the closets, her sister's kids. You're going to hate them. Mm. They're such assholes. <laughs> They're the worst. It's definitely a, oh my gosh, crazy shenanigans kind of rom-com, if that makes sense. Mm, okay. So, um you know, it might be worth it just to be like, huh, how did they actually pull this off? Um, but I will warn about that point because that that made me go, ooh. <laughs> that was gross. But everyone's pretty good in it. It's, it is, like I said, it's very cute ending. And like I said, even how they resolved the how the family situation was real. And I won't spoil that part, but it was really, it was good. They did a good job with that. So, I don't know. That was, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I watched a Christmas movie, technically. So, cool stuff i don't think i watch anything can't really remember Fair watching enough. anything it's been playing and stuff but yeah um nice. that uh the partner wants to watch christmas movies though but like the classics like lethal weapon and stuff i watched a classic last night like the uh the rankin and bass uh like santa origin story whatever it's called i think it's called santa claus or something mm. oh I, I'm, I'm i'm specifically talking about like lethal weapon stuff kind of <laughs> movies <laughs> Die Hard, Lethal Weapon. Die hard. Yeah. Um. News time. I watched Back to the Future three uh, <laughs> today, just because I hadn't seen it in a long time. Is that a Christmas movie? Were the Back to the Future? No, right? Okay. No, I wouldn't say so. Do you guys have any rules for what determines a Christmas movie or not? Because I know I don't. Some people are really sticklers. Like, like if it. If it takes place on Christmas and the fact that it is Christmas affects the plot, then it's a Christmas movie. But if it happens to be Christmas and that doesn't, and, and you could change the day and it doesn't change anything, then it's not a Christmas movie. It's like I we don't have no. rules. Did I watch it on no. Christmas? It's a Christmas movie. Pretty much, it's like how is in my family. So the thing with my family, and this isn't even a downer thing, it's just reality. Like after my grandma passed away, um, not that that holidays were never the same again. It's just <laughs> holidays were just not as I don't know. Like we had traditions, but like you know, you, we liked, a lot we of did you do it because of grandma. Too, like, 
make certain people happy kind of thing, right? Kind of, yeah. yeah. And my grandma's a good person, but, like, we used to, we always, uh, there's a local theater that always did a local production of uh, The Christmas Stories. So we'd watch that with my grandma every year. We watched, you know, Charlie Brown uh, Christmas mm-hmm. or whatever. Oh, no. That okay. kind of, you know, that kind of thing. But, like, as we got older, um, and also my grandma used to um, stay over at our house Christmas Eve, so we would wake up with her and, and stuff like that. But, like, yeah, as we got older, you know, we still would be with the family over Christmas. But, yeah, Christmas movie was, okay, it's December 25th. We've opened up our gifts. What do people feel like watching? Maybe one of the new movies. Because my mom used to buy, like, all the latest, like, Marvel or whatever DVDs that year. Mm. That was a lot of, you know, Christmas gifts. Um, we jokingly say it's Hot Fuzz just because there was, like, two Christmases in a row that we watched Hot Fuzz. <laughs> but I, I don't know why. Similar. We always watch Strange Brew, which is basically like Canadian Blues Brothers film. <laughs> I feel like that's Christmas funny. movies can be whatever you want it to be, basically. Yeah, yeah they that's absolutely. how they sh- that's how they should be, but I know people are weird. My fate that my favorite thing I saw on Facebook was uh, a I know right. How can you be was gay a, a Christmas a... movie like? I know. It's <laughs> a weird thing to my... gay keep. My favorite joke that I saw on on Facebook recently was someone be like, "Oh, here we go. This is the year where everyone says that Die Hard is their favorite Christmas movie just to be funny." Oh, you're so original. Just to be funny? No. Well, no. <laughs> well, no. It's there's it's so you have to understand that like most of the time when I hear people say like Die Hard's their favorite Christmas movie, it's always very tongue in cheek. It's not a like, oh, this is a Christmas movie. It's very much like, <laughs> I. so it's like, what's your favorite Christmas movie? Oh, it's A Wonderful Life, Charlie Brown Christmas, <laughs> Die Hard. It's always, yeah, it's always like that. Is, uh, so. Chronicles of Narnia a Christmas movie? Because it has Santa in it. <laughs> it's true. Santa's in it. Takes place he in a. He some weapons. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Drugs. I know. Yeah, he does. It's funny. But yeah, maybe. I'd say it's a Christmas movie. Oh, one movie I watched, not recently, but since our last episode, uh, it's called The Dead Don't Die. It's a movie I was looking forward to very much, um, but it, it had a very limited release, so I ended up not seeing it in theaters. It stars a lot of people. Most, It mostly stars Bill Murray and Adam Driver hmm. as, as cops in a small town, and then zombies happen, and they have to deal with the zombies. And it's a, yeah, it's was it called a comedy, again? and I guess it is a comedy, but I think... It is the most disappointing movie I might have ever seen. Oh, no. It's not the worst movie, I guess. But, like, I just went in with such high expectations. And it was so not funny. And uh. it was trying so hard to be funny. And the plot was barely there. And so many things just got completely abandoned. Because, like, there's a lot of different threads. Like, you jump between a bunch of people all the time. And some people are just like... Like, the movie ended. I'm like, wait... The last thing we saw about them was like they just they crossed the street. Like there was no closure, like nothing happened. Like it's just it was just a bad, bad movie. That's too and bad. Fortunately the reviews reflect that I think, but uh, uh the cast, it was such a good cast. It's very disappointing. Tilda Swinton was in it, it's like this weird, like Scottish weeb. Like, what? She's, she's like walking around the street like she's like fighting zombies with a katana in this strong Scottish accent. <laughs> like Oh, uh, it's so nuts. Hmm. Don't watch it. Like, I'd rather watch Cats again than watch that movie again. That movie was worse than <laughs> Seriously? Cats. Seriously? For sure. For sure. What? At All least right. Cats was interesting, if weird. <laughs> this movie was just kind of, like, boring most of the time. Because hmm. it's, it's kind of like um, uh, like a Coen Brothers film, where it's, like, it's, it's paced kind of slow, but without the good dialogue or character development or payoff at the end. <laughs> I mean, I left more than zero times, probably, but, like, it is bad. Oh, some famous musician was in it that didn't go anywhere. Like, she just kind of dies off camera. Like, you f- just the, the main character just walked by her corpse. Like, who was it? It's, um, I think it was, like, the lady who, like, was in that um, commercial where she, like, gave a Coke to the cops in the protest scene, whatever her name is. Oh. Lordy, I forgot her name, too. I thought she was a Kardashian. I was IMDb, dead, don't die. No, I thought maybe it wasn't her because that the commercial lady she was like Kardashian, I think, and this wasn't. Like yeah, Kardashian. I was gonna say this that was. was that's what I thought. I was like, I think the commercial lady was a Kardashian. I'm thinking of oh RZA was in it, right? No, this is this is like a Nickelodeon girl, girl all grown up. I'm not gonna show me that movie. God damn it! Of course not. They can't make it simple for you. I got Iggy Pop was in it. 
ensemble cast. Danny Glover's in it apparently. Yeah, Steve Buscemi, Tom Waits. Um, it's not much news other than more cyberpunk stuff, I guess. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, um, that's something I've seen in Gomez. So they were like, um, <clears throat> so you know, like the base consoles from last generation, basically yes. can't play the game at all. <laughs> yeah. And right. um, even yep. though they had like cyberpunk edition previous gen xboxes mm. and Oof. like a week or like two weeks before release uh the the the, the main guy at cd project red was like oh yeah the game works very well on like they literally lied so even though, yeah, and they banned uh journalists from talking about it on yeah non they were basically only journal. giving out pc reviews and yeah, review keys and they were not and allowed to the use PC like reviews they they weren't their own yeah, footage, they were footage, right? yeah. They were given pre-recorded footage yeah. to use in their... So... Oh, yep. that's messed up. Super shady. Basically, CD Projekt Red just kind of tanked their reputation just with this one. To be fair, they got their reputation just from one game. So tanking it just with one game also seems like on par. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, I don't. Yeah. I, it's hard to draw the line between like the developers and like the publishers. I mean, yeah. I guess, the, but like it's. I don't know, it still sucks. So like CD Projekt Red was like, uh, "We are sorry, blah blah blah." You can get refunds for the base console versions and stuff. And. Does that mean I can keep the game? And and people <laughs> were like talking to PlayStation, and PlayStation said no. So CD Projekt Red just said, you can get refunds without actually talking to Microsoft or Sony about it. Right. Oh, um, no. Sony has like a no refund policy. Yeah. And then they finally did talk to Sony about it and Microsoft and Sony pulled the game from the stores and are currently allowing refunds no matter what the playtime or whatever is. So yeah, that's just so scammy and sketchy. But Sony did take it off of their store. They did right? take it off their store. Microsoft yes, did not. It's did. still available to purchase. But it's literally a broken but Microsoft product. is also giving refunds. I believe so, yeah. I, okay. I wish I could get a refund if I can, but I can't. Because my version, I didn't buy directly from the stores. I bought it from a local you seller. Also, you did get 20 hours out of it. 20 hours that I wish I could get back. <laughs> no, I just feel That's like... True. I just feel like um, I was forcing myself to like it. And after like 15 hours, I just had to tell myself, I'm not enjoying this at all. I'm not enjoying it at all. Um, but yeah, it's not much news other than that. I mean, that's like a couple of small things here and there, but there's really not much else. You guys got anything to bring up if you want to? Not really. Um there was a Pokemon thing, but you already talked about a different Pokemon thing. I think maybe that's what I'm confusing with. Yeah, I don't. I didn't have anything like that I researched before this show. Um, Sarah, are you playing? How many Final Fantasy fourteen expansions are there right now? The new ones on Shadowbringers there... or something. Yeah, Shadowbringers been out for a minute. Um, but because they're doing so, I I'm not sure if this is a typical MMO thing. I because I don't play a lot of MMOs, but basically, um. In Final Fantasy, they have their expansions, and then afterwards, they kind of have, like, little mini, like... They're kind of, like, meant to bridge the, the expansion story to the new expansion, basically. Mm. Um, they call them... Um, what do they call them? Patches? They call them patches. So, um, there was, of course... Yeah. Well, they... Yeah, basically... Because I don't really... The subscription, I think, is for, like, getting to level 70, I think. It's free. Um, so, I think that... Yeah, it's pretty generous, um, to be honest with you. It, not to, like, toot its horn, but it's true. Um, I mean, that's a good thing because trying to get through the first 50 levels is a bit of a slog. <laughs> so, basically, 1.0 um, was the scrapped one. Like, no one talks about it. It doesn't exist anymore. So, it starts with 2.0, <laughs> but then after that, there were patches like 2.1, 2.2, and each of those were, like, little bits and pieces to bridge to the next story so if we count from that there's realm reborn which is the first one technically then it's heaven's ward and then it was uh 
the Stormblood and then Shadowbringer. So we're on the fourth patch right now, but we're on like those after patch stories. So we, they just released 5.4. So that means there was 5.0, that was Shadowbringers, and then there was like a 5.1, 5.2, so 5.3. Yeah. yeah. Um, 5.4 just came out, um, so that's what we're waiting for. Basically, we're we're expecting to basically kind of see the intro next time of, like, what the new expansion's going to be. I just have no idea when it's going to come out. It's probably going to take years. Um, but, yeah, uh, I mean, I've, I have, I'm have i up to date on the content. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, so. I guess this is pretty big. The direct X creator start, uh, died at age 55. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's young. Yeah. I thought he'd be older than that for some reason. Totally. Like, Direct X sounds like a really old thing to me. <laughs> um, it's like Flash. Yeah. Right? Flash is, uh, just got his last update or something. I believe. Uh, like oh, a few right. weeks ago. Uh, yeah. It's definitely on the way hmm. out. Uh, or restart. Other than that, Hades is winning all the awards. Um, oh yeah, I guess they did do that uh, game award slash advertising thing that Jeff Keighley likes to do yeah, every year. Was, um, and they showed off was, a Mass Effect and Dragon Age, right? Uh, they showed off Mass Effect for sure. I don't think they showed off a Dragon Age. Oh, they did. Yeah. They did show off a Dragon Age. I, oh, okay. I All I heard was the Mass Effect one, which of course, you know, leads a lot of questions. It's one of those things that like, I'm not like jumping for joy. Yeah. It's definitely just like... I'm going to see what they do. Mm. That's cool, you know. Because it's not the same I Bioware. Am, like, yeah, it is It is different. I mean, there's some people that, like, the main, the head guy um, of the original story is gone, um, which, eh, whatever, but we'll see. Um, I'll, I I kind of hope they bridge Andromeda a little bit. Um, I'm not one of those people that thinks that there's some crazy people online that are suddenly Andromeda fanboys, that I, which I don't mm. understand, because I'm like, where were you? Um, cause I'm still a little salty that we never got the DLC for Andromeda. I know why, I know why, but it's still, I still feel bad about it cause I really liked it. Um, but like, I kind of hope they at least bridge it a little bit. I think there's a chance for them to, because it looks like this could be way far in the future. Crossing fingers. <laughs> um, it also seems pretty, pretty obvious which ending is going to be canon which does not surprise me but i'm curious to see how that goes <laughs> just based on the clues I think, oh what did I, I saw some reddit post this week i think it was a screenshot from cyberpunk and it was a pirates of penzance reference that's funny and i saw this in the mass effect subreddit because somebody thought it was a mass effect reference it's the <laughs> I am the very model of a modern Matrix Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's so, um, okay, yeah. It, it, is, it is in Mass Effect, but the person yeah. thought it was from Mass uh. Effect. Like, oh, oh yes. no. <laughs> yeah, so just to, just to give you some background, uh, it's actually really funny. So one of the characters that you meet uh, in Mass Effect 2, and he's amazing. He's a, he's a scientist. He's the best. Uh, sci- he's a scientist solarian. That's the joke. And the reason... the very model of a scientist, scientist solarian. Scientist the, solarian. The, the joke is um, the voice voice actor the original voice actor because actually in, in mass effect 3 that voice actor died so they actually had to get a new guy mm. um but the original voice actor for him he actually used to sing um i'm so sorry i can't that think song. of not just that song but that whole th- that whole character he d- played d- that character well not even just that character that's that that's from um uh, some play some, yeah but that they're part of a whole bigger thing and i can't think of their names Ugh, this is gonna drive me nuts oh, the, the two guys who wrote it yes yeah 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 well, I can't think of their names. Brewster um, and Sh- Schubert. Um, no. <laughs> what is it? S- William Sh- Sol- uh, Sullivan and Gilbert. S- Gilbert and Sullivan. Thank you. Gilbert I- and Sullivan. Okay. Anyway, he was a f- he was well. He he used to do Gilbert and Sullivan songs. Like he used to perform them. Um, notoriously and s- hard. Yes, they are notoriously hard. We had to sing them for a choir concert in college one year. Um, it was actually amazing because one of my favorite. Uh, music professors who's like freaking beethoven incarnate just in, he, anyway um he sang the, that 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 part of the song <laughs> yeah i know wasn't deaf just his, he's just was a little little on it like a little off kilter he was great though anyway he sang that song but anyway that's where that joke comes from um and so yes. they there's a whole song and basically when you do his loyalty mission and you get to know him like one of his last conversations is he can sing that song for you so that's where that comes from that's cool 
I have to I have to add though to your bigger story. I have a worse example of that. You know, you said that that person was like, I thought that came from Mass Effect. I have a real life worse example. Not me, a friend of mine. A, fr- a friend of mine admitted um, he used to be he used to play uh, Resident Evil as a kid. Um, like his father, I guess, used to play. So he used to watch it like really young. And I guess uh, there's a piano scene where they play Moonlight Sonata. And he didn't know that that's just a song. So one day, when he, I guess one day he was at school, like, you know, five years later and some concert or whatever. And someone was playing that song. And he was like, oh, the Resident Evil song. And he had to get like a man of culture. Exactly. And he had to be very much correct to going, no, this is much older than that. Oh, no. So, uh, yeah. That's like thinking Hall of the Mountain Kings from like, any you know random trailer you see it in exactly. like oh jingle all the way hall of mountain king i love that <laughs> that composer is so brilliant i know oh my gosh so funny anyway i don't have any other news though <laughs> we can wrap up we can wrap up that was actually a pretty long episode mm. i know just <laughs> i think because we just, just shooting the shit i guess rambling yeah. Yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, this is Sarah. Thing. Oh, do we start? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is Sarah Scopic, S A R A H S C O P I C. I am pretty much on Twitter these days, but you can catch me on my other show, RNG and T. Uh, we do monthly podcasts and streams as well. So come and say hi to me there as well. Uh, and I'm Fo Hamner, and uh, hopefully. Uh, I've been putting actually sketches. I've been working on sketches, which will Ooh, go on YouTube channel. That's um, fancy. But once WoW gets out of its talons out of me, which should probably happen in like three months, I'll hopefully get back to recording regular content. Um, I have a real big queue of games I'm just not playing at all, and if I play them, I'll record them. So we'll see that when that happens. It'll happen eventually. And I'm Pupu Nupi, and it'll be, you know where. This has been episode 179 of the Play on Podcast. Thank you very much for watching and listening. We'll see you next time.